Hi, everyone. Welcome to Metaphysical. Switzerland is home to some of the world's most influential organizations, from the World Economic Forum to the United Nations, from Swiss cheesemakers to Swiss watchmakers. But did you know there are deeper reasons why the rich and powerful elites have been attracted to the area for generations? Have you heard of occult ceremonies, strange local legends, and scientific projects revolving around the mountainous country? Well, join remote viewer John Vivanco and me, investigative researcher Rob Counts, for a show that's out of this world. Hey, John. Hello. 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 <clears throat> How are you? I'm doing well. Good. Just trying to get some kind of Swiss thing going inside of me. Yeah. Hello. It, Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. I'm getting that vibe. You getting kinda, it? You're getting the vibe? Kinda, yeah. I kind of don't want to reply. My mom was Swiss, so any sort of maybe one of Swiss that we do is is okay because I'm part Swiss. Swiss. Yeah, because you're part Swiss. Right. So it's all good. Well, there there's so many weird things. I mean, right now the you know, like the World Economic Forum is meeting there all the time, right? And um, I mean, the UN the UN is there. Um, we've got CERN in switzerland um you know then you've got some of the some of the best chocolate in the world made there the best watches in the world are certainly made there the best toblerone, type toblerone chocolate yeah. yeah yeah you know what toblerone is right yeah toblerone yeah it's is delicious. delicious i know but it, it's not only a chocolate they're uh they're big cement blocks to block tanks what that's where it comes from. Well, that makes sense. So yeah, they, like, they just made it into a candy. Yeah, well, it's delicious. <laughs> That's kind of weird, though. You know, also, um, you know, the Swiss Army knife, right? I mean, there's been a lot of innovations yeah. in Switzerland too. The Swiss Army knife. Don't go home with. Don't leave home without it, right? And then, um, more bizarrely, which we'll be going into in the first episode, is the Gotthard Base Tunnel. 35.5 mile long tunnel. And wow, that opening ceremony though. Yeah. yeah, weird stuff. Yeah, that was weird. That was a weird opening ceremony. Well, and you know, I've been wondering for a while, like, okay, so the, there's this like Swiss neutrality, right? Started in the first world war, they didn't get involved. Second world war, also didn't get involved, but managed to defend themselves with about 450 troops that they pulled together in just like a couple of hours. They had, in, in among those 450,000 troops, they had 12,000 women in those troops to, this is basically to defend Switzerland if anyone tried to invade, right? And, um, and it, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's a bit, it's a bit strange because 450,000 troops, that's massive, considering yeah. the fact that there's only about 8 million people in the entire country. Right. Not that many people. No, it's not. I mean, Switzerland was supposed to be actually, actually it goes earlier than World War I, I think. Um, I think back to the 1600s when they really were, were beginning to be neutral, like in treaties. And then during the Napoleonic Wars, Switzerland uh, was this sort of in-between zone in mm. fighting. And, and when, when um, I don't know, I can't remember who won the war and pushed back the French, they kept Switzerland as, as this neutral buffer zone so that um, it would sort of absorb the villages on the French border and they had really nothing to fight in general. So yeah. it, it began, it began a, a while ago, but then, you know, World War II is just trippy on the neutrality side because. How, yeah, I mean, how do you stay neutral with Nazis around? Like surrounded, completely yeah. surrounded. And, and then how did the Nazis manage to not, you know, invade? That's strange. Right. Too. Were they afraid of the 450,000 troops or was it something else? I mean, right. and you know, I, I don't see Hitler as someone who's going to back down to a Rothschild if they're well, wealthy. Maybe he knows that Switzerland is the portal to hell. Oh. <laughs> that escalated quickly, John. Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm only kidding. 
Actually, no, yeah, no, know, maybe, maybe you aren't. <laughs> we don't know. We're seeing weird videos about this as well, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, we, you know, my family on my mom's side, coming from Switzerland, um, her her family's name was Oppenzell, Oppenzeller, Oppenzeller, and they come from a spe specific region called Oppenzell up in the mountains. Mm. Uh, but we had friends from Switzerland, and I remember when I was a kid, they would come over, and they had a couple of kids that were the same age as me. And um, we went to SeaWorld or something, and I was probably like 13. The kids were like 13 and eight. We went to SeaWorld San Diego or something, and 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 their parents dressed them in these weird puffy like Speedos for just, you know, going out and about. And yeah. the, the, the kids like broke into one of the um, one of the pens where they kept like geese and stuff. It was like an exhibit. They broke into the pens into this exhibit and were chasing geese around in their brightly colored puffy Speedos. I'm going, I mean, it was embarrassing for, for, for a kid to begin with um, to be going to SeaWorld with these other people who were wearing like bright puffy cut they were like they had troll hair on them or something it was really bizarre this anyway is, that's that's like as close as to switzerland as i've ever gotten and that was and as was, close as you ever wanted to get and it was just weird it was just weird so this is uh one of the most famous cheeses in switzerland most people think of the holy swiss cheese as right. like jarlsberg or something but no actually gruyere is the king of cheeses there in my opinion and if you haven't had any good gruyere I highly recommend trying some yeah and that's the appenzeller and that was right, her the that was her her name right your your mom yeah yeah that's that was that well so my mom it's a long story my mom was adopted that found her family they're appenzellers a well-to-do family in the midwest but they had to uh, put my mom up for adoption because they got you know pregnant before getting married and that was oh, no no right so then my mom found him later and found out her whole heritage and, wow. and their last name was oppenzeller straight from switzerland wow yeah well um yeah switzerland has a lot more occult things in it than people imagine which is a little bit bizarre because there's already enough conspiracy theories going around about the world economic forum cern the un um and you know rightly so i would say there's some creepy organizations there that are trying to control things um uh but oh, like you know, here's a New York Times article from 1997. Uh, it's called Switzerland. The headline is Switzerland Occult Magnet Attracts Aliens and Cloning Offers. So it actually goes into a few interesting things in this uh, in this article. And um, one is this this realism cult that we actually ended up getting into in one of our Edge of Wonder episodes about um, Ashtar or something related to these organizations that worship, I don't know if you want to call them extra, extra dimensional, potential extra dimensional beings or something like that, but have gotten a little wacky. Um, you know, here it's leader rail claims to have been contacted in 1973 by almond eyed aliens who created mankind in laboratory laboratories and who will return to earth one day. Now, yeah. um, you know, here's 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 an interesting couple of facts too. The Swiss involvement in cults, cults was spotlighted in 1994 by the deaths of 48 members of the Order of the Solar Temple. Swiss professors who have studied cults estimate that there are 90 to 120 such groups in the Geneva area alone. Geneva, as you all know, is the is where the UN is. That's strange. Right. Yeah. And, oh, what's that? You know what? Lindsay, pull up the Child Eater of Burn statue. Ah, oh, the Child Eater of Burn. I've seen this before. <laughs> this is that's straight on like Saturn worship. I that's think. Saturn. That's Kronos. It's got to be. Yeah, we're we're looking for it right now. I so mean, that statue. I mean, it's got some stories around it, but I yeah, that's that's Kronos. That's Saturn. That's that that's that's from the 1500s, I think. And that is definitely Kronos. that's got to be Saturn, right? Yeah. I mean, these are yeah. 
What's strange too is that in the past, this is what a villain would wear. <laughs> and now that's just a garden gnome, John. Oh no, you, you're, yeah. Well, you said I, I escalated it. No. <laughs> Well, I'm bringing up garden gnomes. Little Man, I'm just, I'm going to have to get rid of my hat like that then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't want to wear that anymore. Look a little bit no, too much. But, I mean, think about it though. Like, okay, so what's going, I don't know. Maybe we don't go into this yet, but but I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm starting to go down the Lord of the Rings path. <laughs> I, I mean, they seem to like to burrow into mountains. Right, just in general, they got a lot of weird, weird burrowing tendencies. Who, who? the Swiss? The Swiss, yes. Right. You know, and and the Appenzells, the from the Appenzell region are really short. They're short. They're they're jokes in Switzerland of, about them being so short. So you think their blood may have been mixed with a dwarvish race at some point or something? Could have been. Well, I mean, have you heard of the Barbagazi? No, what's that? The Barbagazi is a a Swiss mythological creature who's a dwarf and he's got really big feet, right? Like, 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 you know, hobbit feet. And, and they're big enough that he uses them as skis to slide down the mountain. Right. And he, he lives in the mountain. He lives in mountains. So there's this weird, I don't know. You know look, if you can't correlate and connect things with Lord of the Rings, I think you're basically failing. I agree. I, you know, I think you're failing if you can't do that. And so what if Switzerland is, was Middle Earth? Or or a part of. Or a part of it. And what if Mount Doom was in Switzerland? What if Mount Doom is right behind you? Hmm. Matterhorn. Yeah. The Matterhorn. That's the Matterhorn Mountain right there, you guys. And um, that is an incredible mountain. Um. But, you know, it's interesting because Switzerland has some of the the best lakes to swim in, also the best skiing in the world. But like they have over seven thousand or seven thousand or more lakes in Switzerland, just about seven thousand. Two hundred and eight well, mountains. Why would that be the best lakes to swim in? People go there to swim. All right. OK. People also people also go to Switzerland to die. Because there is apparently a, uh, it's called like a, a, a assisted suicide. It's legal in, in Switzerland. Right. And so they have this thing that's called suicide tourists there. Wow. Literally, they literally come to get assisted to die. Yeah. That's bizarre, too. I mean, just because, you know, I mean, it just kind of goes with this like Switzerland neutrality thing quite a bit. And the, the finance. Um right right i mean that's that's kind of interesting i guess you know the united states is where um people go to have abortions swiss is where they go to die <laughs> um yeah and 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 you know actually there's a before we get into a little bit more of the weird stuff because we're going to get into Gotthard uh, tunnel real soon um, I was actually curious to find out about the the Swiss watches. I didn't quite know how that developed over there. And in, in, in the I think it was the 1600s or something when Calvinism was spreading. So Calvinism was an offshoot of Protestantism. And Calvin, who was, I guess, ruling there at the time, was a bit extreme. And he and actually, I'm not sure why he was extreme, because it's hard to know why people make decisions that they make now. You know, you can't you can look back and judge a decision that's being made. But what ended up happening was he abolished the wearing of jewelry for a while. Huh. And it kind of screwed everybody there because Switzerland was known for making jewelry. What was yeah. the purpose of that? Well, I think it was because it's like in Calvinism and in Protestantism trying to like, it was sort of God rules, right? Being and, and humble. Right. Yeah, being humble yeah. and all of these things. And I think that they wanted to kind of force this this in. And 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 so the 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 jewelers had a difficult time. And and so until someone kind of found a loophole and the rule, because right. Calvin really liked watches because they were they were practical. You know, you could tell time and you could do things, but it's weird. 
because we just saw <laughs> that statue of Saturn and Saturn is Kronos and Kronos is supposed to be the, the God right. of time. And so all of a sudden now we've got this like loophole that was made and, and watches like all these watchmakers moved into Switzerland because all of a sudden the best watches started coming out of Switzerland and they, they built up camp and they found a loophole into the jewelry business and made a killing off of watches. So they wow. innovated at the time when it was like very difficult to innovate, right. but it's also bizarre because of what we just said, which is like, it's almost like whether, whether it was by design or not, right. Saturn seems to still be ruling that area. Right. You know? Right. Exactly. That's bizarre to think about. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's really interesting. Yeah. Huh. I didn't know about that. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, you know, this whole thing, I mean, like, okay, we'll, we'll be getting into this in the second episode, you guys, but obviously, like, the the, the elephant in the room in Switzerland is is usually CERN and the WEF. Right. We'll be getting into CERN in the next episode, but one of the things that I found that you're aware of as well is this Gotthard Tunnel. Right. It's a 35.3 mile long or something like that, 35 mile long 35.5 mile long tunnel. That is a massively long tunnel through the mountains. It will and cut then, right through the Alps, right? That's right through the Alps. And when they opened this thing, they had the most bizarre, like the most bizarre ritual or ceremony or parade or whatever to open the tunnel. I don't get good feelings from this tunnel. I mean, this looks like catacombs, not tunnels. And, um, and it's man, the yeah. to the underworld. I mean, geez, that's, that's how it feels, right? It yeah. almost it's like I get the same feeling from this tunnel that I get when I look at that like crazy hadron collider at CERN. Right. Um, right. You remember remember those um, stories that you were covering in one earlier episode where you were talking about the portals to hell, like yeah. in the ground. I mean, that's that's what it feels like. You know, people standing above and seeing all these what demons flying around down below them. I mean, oh, that's what that thing feels like. The right? host of castle you're talking about. Exactly. Yeah, right. it does feel like that. Right. So it's like, gosh, man, what 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 is okay, so what is the deal with this ceremony? Like, why? Yeah. I, I mean what happened. I mean, can we show some of that or not? Yeah, so everybody at home, we're going to show some of this. It's kind of up to you to decide whether or not these people are trolling everyone or it's like something that they do there. Because why go through all of this trouble? I mean, we're going to talk about what was involved in the Gotthard Base Tunnel Ceremony. And... Um, Lindsay's going to pull some stuff up here for those of you watching on, on video. I mean, we've got some construction type workers in, you know, fluorescent suits. And there's this whole onstage ceremony. Um, gosh. And okay. We're, we're not even looking at the weird stuff yet. I'm going to read through some of this stuff. Okay. So, uh, here's some of the strange appearances. A topless woman dressed as a bird or angel with a giant baby head hovering above nine construction workers who represent the nine who died during the building of the tunnel. Angel of death? I don't know. Yeah, uh, right. And look at them pounding right there. They're pounding, pounding. This is like full-on ritualistic. Yeah. And we're actually calling we're, forth something. They're yeah, calling. we don't really want to show that bird angel thing because it's like it's like nudity in it so we're just going to kind of stay away from that but it, but it, so there's a, this also this is a two-part ceremony and this is out what we're looking at right now is outside we're looking at but but some of the stuff is inside okay very strange stuff okay so they all died so symbolically in this ritual they all died and now they're what ghosts i don't know these look like banshees though don't they <laughs> Like, like these look like i don't know I love, I love how you think man no they're banshees man <laughs> <laughs> oh man the eye of sauron there in the background <laughs> yeah there you There's go eyeball on Dude, you're right it is wrong. <laughs> okay so m marching construction workers like mindless drones that's what we saw kind of at the beginning okay so there, there is. is 
also in there. Yeah, and that I mean that looks like the ball ball character with the big horns right. and stuff, right? Yeah, Baphomet. Yeah, Baphomet ball like he like just r really <laughs> what the heck? I mean Pan, I don't know what that is. Pan, right. Pan Labyrinth. Um weird like sham shamanistic uh dancing uh you know they had animal skulls uh in the inside portion like like goats and gosh look at this you know, i mean this is just literally the for the opening of a of a tunnel come on yeah why and like why go through all this yeah, like I mean, on screen look why it's like a, I don't know, are they into bestiality there? And these beetles are those beetles that they worshipped in Egypt. The scarab, it's like yeah. death beetles. Scarabs or whatever. <laughs> I just, so Angela Merkel was there. We know that as well as other, you know. Isn't that people. Angela Merkel on screen? Oh, no, that guy has a beard. <laughs> this is just bizarre, right? Super weird. Like this is. Like this is why this is why modern art just needs to be extinguished from the world is because you can you can actually do stuff like this and get away with it without anyone questioning you. Right. It's like, shouldn't everything in here be questioned? <laughs> it's so right. strange. Well, what's so bizarrely out of place are the the Swiss people with the horns around the edges. <laughs> yeah. What is that? Like, is, is I mean, was Ricola a sponsor? I don't know. I know right. Ricola. <laughs> okay, so there's like uh, some possibly a dead lamb was involved. Um, people dressed up as Ibex's nature and clouds, mimed sex between animals, mimed sex between people. More than 600 actors in the ceremony, tons of eye symbolism, as you guys just saw. Flying figures that look like ghosts. We saw that earlier. Very eerie music. Actors dressed as beetles in front of a scary face that might have been Angela Merkel. We're not sure. Wearing horns. Dana Beck's actor screaming. Literal eyes on screen. People kneeling and bowing to the horned guy. Um, yeah. What the heck was that? And why go through all of that? Like, how much did that cost? Right. How much did all that cost, really? But I mean, I started to look into who directed that entire thing. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know. But look at look at what they're doing and and how throughout history um the underworld going underground is part of the underworld and in the underworld lives dark beings, darker beings, Satan and whatnot, Baphomet. And so symbolically, I mean really symbolically, this is what they're showing you. This is literally what they are showing you in this right. film here, this video, this performance. They are showing you that they opened a portal, a gate to the underworld. That's what they're showing you. What else could it be? Well, yeah, or, or I mean, or, okay, but also they are, this group I found is obsessed with the idea of transformation. Almost as if once you enter in the tunnel, and come out the other side, you're transformed into something else. <laughs> into what? You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, this you're is transformed into a person wearing a ghillie suit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, what's that? That's that just some normal guy. I I and look at all these people in like suits and stuff watching this. It's so dark. And so is this the one that happened inside? This is the inside. This okay. is the inside ceremony that we're watching right now. Yeah, it's it's the end. It's like the sound of music kind of thing here. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, a, a bit actually. It really does look kind of like that. Like what yeah. are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. So there's church music playing, apparently. Yeah, uh, this is, this is uh, every teenager in Switzerland right here. <laughs> I don't know. I'm at a loss. But, you know, yeah, it's uh, it's straight. I mean, it's it, it's bizarre that. Uh, it's hard to like why do they take themselves 
this or look at themselves this way? Why is this culture here? And and why, you know, I mean, Calvinism was very strong back then. That's very, that's Puritan Christianity, right. Christian, right? So it's like, does it, how did we get here from there? <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, you look at Switzerland and it is, it is because of all the tunnels. Yet when you get to all the tunnels that have been drilled into these mountains, I think you're looking at like over 374,000 bunkers in that place. Going 374,000? Over, over 374,000. And, and since burrowing into earth, into mountains, is that idea of going into the underworld, I, there's something going on there. There's there's something weird going on there. Over three hundred and seventy four thousand bunkers well, just, are drilling dude. into mountains. So there's a uh, found this article called the Got Gotthard Tunnel and Satan. Well, actually, no, they they recommended doing a search for that on Google. But the the um, the headline is Gateway to the Alps and Gateway to Hell. <laughs> to your point, okay. And look at this quote here from this article. Quote, a giant mechanized worm eats deep into the bowels of hell to the delight of a half-naked demonic angel, Lucifer, lesbians, pagans, demons, goat gods, and catatonic orange zombies in front of the delighted elite of the New World Order. Now, this was these were reviews, I think, that were made of the the opening ceremony and what's interesting is this entire article just talks about all of the right quote unquote i want to quote here right-wing news media that reviewed what was going on to make fun of them so i almost feel like sometimes they do these ceremonies like this specifically so that right-wing media or just normal. Actually, I don't want to say right wing, wing media. I just want to say normal people in the normal world yeah. will look at this and be like, what the F is going on? I'm going to write a review on this and tell people. And then they use it to make fun of them in a similar way that they did in the Salem witch trials, which was just like nonsense. Right. You no, know, I mean, this is interesting, too. You know, in the Salem witch trials, I was telling you this 19 people died. But in, in Switzerland alone, about, according to some, uh, you know, authorities on the matter, about 700 people were put to death for witchcraft. Wow. And the wow. museum, in the museum, there's a witchcraft museum in Switzerland, which is headed up or managed by a modern day witch. Mm. So Europe had tons and tons of culture around witchcraft. That's where a lot of it comes. Vampires, witchcraft, werewolves, that all started in Europe. Right. And somehow the Salem witch trials are the most notable form of, of quote unquote, crazy Christians putting which which is death when over 80,000 witches and werewolves reported alleged witches and werewolves died all across Europe. 80,000. 80, 80 wait, witches and werewolves. So there were people at the same time that people were were being accused of being witches. People were also being accused of being werewolves in Europe. Wow. And really? 80,000 people were put to death for this across Europe. And they're, and they're pointing to the Salem witch trials as if it's crazy. Right. Oh, yeah. 19, right, right. 19 people. That's it. What? So actually, I've just, I'm actually more curious about the werewolf side. Yeah. I mean, like, how did you determine if someone was a werewolf? that that's that's there's like, like werewolves, vampires and all of that. Like people would look for tendencies that they had um and you know the lore around werewolf has to do with curses right um strange behavior right with on a full moon psychotic tendencies and you know i don't i did a lot of research on this and i'm not really i think that people in the past would see behavior and compare it to an animal Right. More so than necessarily seeing a change. Like they would see a, a physical change, obviously, because when someone starts foaming at the mouth and they're acting like an actual wolf, you're going to say, you know, they look like, but there was a lot of this weird stuff going around, like lycanthropy right. type of stuff. And now, you know, some authors have pointed to the fact that this was more like, 
modern day serial killers that had gone insane rather than an actual turning into right. a wolf. Right. But right. there are other, of course, strange sightings of actually seeing wolf, like people turning into wolves. Yeah, and, right. and some, some Roman soldiers even swearing that they'd seen it as back far back as like before Christ. I mean, 500 BC and stuff, you know. Right, and I, I know there's a lot of reports that go way, way back in Germany in that whole area of of Dogman, you know. Mm -hmm. But you know, Dogman, from my investigations, is a totally different thing than a werewolf. Um, there's something there's something about Dogman that's absolutely different. It's it's pretty much static in that form, but the whole werewolf thing is something that's always really fascinated me because uh, there are some cases, some Dogman cases where you do have witnesses that claim a person turned into it or turned back into a person, which and which is very curious to me. It's, it's very, I mean, we're talking about changelings or skinwalkers or right. call them whatever you want. I mean, right. you know, and, and it's all over the world where we're hearing about this stuff. You know, we've right. got Skinwalker Ranch over here in the United States. We've got werewolves and in China, there's there's were snakes and were foxes. And right. I mean, bizarre, like people changing into these things, not like. Not yeah. shamanically, but like. Not in a spirit form, but li no. literally in a physical form. And it, right? like actually that the that the 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 animal or the person or the object has gained enough energy to physically change their themselves and do something else. Right, right, right. I mean, yeah. these are obviously these are the lore and the mythology. And 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 I mean some of these, like I, I highly recommend everyone at home if you're interested in strange lore that we're not familiar with in, in the Chinese culture. There is a book called Tales from a Chinese Studio that you should check out. I mean, they talk about like where foxes um, and how much they affected villages in the China area. These are foxes that could change into humans. They would have multiple tails depending on how much energy they had. A very strange myth. Um, right. But yeah, I mean, you know, um, not sure how we actually got all the way here, but um, that's kind of what I love about this show. I got, I'm going to get that book. I've never heard that book. I'm yeah, I'll send you a link to it for sure. Yeah, it's 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 a good one, man. Even reading one of those before you go to bed at night, you just learn so much about their culture and their their like right. lore. Right. It's really right. interesting. Yeah. Well, back to Switzerland. So what else we got there? I mean. I got I got really hung up on the Barb Barbagazi and the whole Middle Earth connection, um, and wondering about this sort of I don't know this idea. There's like this weird idea of burrowing into rock, dwarves, and the shortness of the um, Oppenzellers who live in that region, the Oppenzell region. Yeah, in general, and just like why are there these weird correlations? Like we get to J.R. Tolkien. Who wrote this stuff? Why are there these weird correlations that you could find with this stuff in certain areas? I mean, are we look? Are we? Yeah, there's the Barbagazi. Look, it's that got literally big looks like a yeti ha mated with a hobbit. Right, it doesn't. It? Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's weird to me. It's very weird to me. I mean, you have these. I guess you could say they're. Um, what are they? They're just these sort of subconscious themes maybe that people pick up on and who knows where they come from or were they real in a different time and place on this earth where you know you've got these these J.R. Tolkien for instance you know you've got these these beings who lived in another way who battled the eye of, of Sauron who battled Sauron and and then you have a region where <clears throat> people are burrowing into rocks and they're all short people and they've been doing it for a long time. Is this some kind of like, like echo from another time? You know, what's, what is going on here? Because, <clears throat> you know, I personally think that the whole deal with um, digging into the mountain there was not for the necessarily for the purpose of just to hide from the Germans or sure. whatever. 
or travel or whatever. Right. You know, I think there's something else going on here. And I'm, you know, I'm not relating it to, you know, the hot, the, the hobbits or the dwarves from, from middle earth, um, J.R. Tolkien stories. It just is a kind of an odd little touch point for me. Like, why, why is that? Is there just, just this, you know, when people like J.R. Tolkien, they will dip into the subconscious of, of, of all humans to pull their stories out. So, so I think it's fascinating that you start to find these correlations, especially when you get into mythology, deep, deep mythology of cultures here on earth, where you do find these weird correlations with these stories um, that people create, like Tolkien created. But then you have almost this living story of it that is going on right now. I don't know. But in, in a modern way, in a modern and, way. And I also think it's, it's really strange that, you know, there are, there are, I don't want to get too into this because I actually think we need to do a whole show and or series on J.R.R. Tolkien. Right. Because there's just so much, but Sauron, you know, the main villain, the eye, I mean, there's so many correlations to Sauron as a villain and strange symbolism now. I mean, let's say Sauron was Saturn. Like, I don't know. It sounds similar. Sauron, Saturn, you know, like if, if this area was the area where some of that stuff, if it really happened, went down, because, you know, there's some people out there that think that J.R.R. Tolkien was pulling from real history, not from right. a, an imagined you know, story, but more like retelling a story that that had been lost that he found in the in the libraries of Oxford. Right. So and, you know, the fact that that this Saturn, random Saturn. Um, why would we be making statues of a being that ate his children? Right. Why would you do that? And why would it be kept up for so long? And why would that have been up since the what did you say the 1500s 1600s yeah, 1500s so is that a memory of something but that's i mean okay so think about what was going on back then did we we came out of the inquisition um right so the catholic inquisition around that time so people were very very hardcore catholics they had to be um otherwise they would be persecuted by the church and, and, and this, that statue, if it is Kronos, Saturn, Saturn worship, I mean, that don't you think that would have been destroyed? Don't you think that they would have taken that thing down? The first but, thing that would have been destroyed. Right, exactly. So why is that still there? Yeah, why didn't Calvin not destroy that thing? Right. Calvin was, was seemingly pretty hardcore, right? Right, right. You can't wear watches, but hey, we're going to keep the baby eater statue up. Yeah, but well, you can't wear jewelry the right? of them around. <laughs> totally. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, it's weird. I don't get that part. I just don't get it. I, and that that has actually confused me throughout history too. Where it's like we have all of these stories about how you know, quote unquote, crazy Christians were, like how crazy they were, and yet then you got a king like Louis the Fourteenth painting Apollo on his mur on his murals on his ceilings, and you're like, wouldn't well, that have been frowned upon? They called him the sun king. Exactly. Yeah. Apollo was the sun god. He was like the, you know, I mean, right. and of course, you know, the king rules, right? Whatever he says goes, but what, then what, there was so also what year, the- What year we talk, what year was he in power? Uh, six, 1600s, I believe. Um, Lindsay, Lindsay can I mean, confirm. You know, I mean- Louis the 14th. The, you know, Christianity, Catholicism, Judaism, well, Christianity and Judaism started out more as henotheistic as opposed to monotheistic because of the other gods. And and so maybe, I don't know, being a king in power, he could claim, well, I'm henotheistic as opposed to monotheistic back then. I have no idea. To yeah, but, but 16, we're talking about 1643. This is like, yeah, that's pretty this late. is a hundred years after the Renaissance and the Renaissance right. being like the most, you know, Right, right. Well, he'd have to explain that one. I, I, 
I personally want to dig into this myself and find the answer because it's 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 fascinating. And those murals are probably the best our entire mankind has to offer. The ones that are on the ceilings at Versailles, they are hugely underrated. I'm yeah. talking right now from from being a painter myself. Like they are amazing. They're yeah. incredible. I think I might even have one of them on the background of my phone. So, you know what I mean? It's like, it's, they're, they're awesome. Yeah. But it's still, it's like surprising. Uh, you know, at first I was like, oh, these are uh, some type of God, you know, but actually it's, it's Apollo. Hmm. Well, so this is after the Renaissance. So, I mean, there was, the minds were opening up. So, so it could have been from the perspective of literature and, you know, whatnot, as opposed to maybe, you know, but even a false idol kind of idea. But even in the Renaissance, you have guys like Raphael. Oh, here's the, here's my favorite mural right here. The ceiling of Louis the 14th in Versailles. Uh, and yeah, it's amazing. And it almost like, and, and this is built into the architecture in such a way that it almost feels like you're looking up into heaven when you look up. Right. You know? like it's like movies of the past nearly you know right 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 i mean that those were the movies of the past well okay but you Maybe know what we were just talking about Raphael's um the the philosopher painting that he did right okay i mean yes learning from the past right understand it's like all the great men and all the great men leading up to this day they they did not look down upon history the way that we think they did because they were crazy right. christians like you have Plato in the center, right next to Aristotle, and all these great men all around here that have that have forged culture. I believe that's Aristotle. I know that's Plato looking up. Yeah, it's 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 Aristotle because his hand's coming down. Because Aristotle was more mm -hmm. earthly and worldly, and Plato was more, you know, unfortunately they missed the memo because Socrates didn't make it in here somehow. Um, or if he did, I, I'm not. I mean, actually, he may be in there. I'm not sure, but I'm surprised he's not front and center because Socrates was like the the he's what created so much. Yeah, culture. Plato, Plato referred to him mostly. Yeah. He was a yeah student of Socrates. Right. Yeah. Wow. You know, know, so it's just like what we know about history, you know, um, we don't, we, you know, it's 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 easy to to make a lot of like for a lot of people to make claims, but you don't know what was on the minds of the people at that time. And, you know, even judging from this painting alone and how amazing it is, they were a lot smarter than we are now, I think. Oh, absolutely. Oh, there, that's Socrates. Thank you. Yeah, yeah that looks yeah. like. Him. I mean, you know, being being taught as a classical, I was trained as a classical painter. Yeah. Um, and 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 like that skill that that skill, like learning that skill, when we have all these distractions around us now is a really difficult thing. Think about being trained as a classical painter um, in the 1600s, in the 1500s. I mean, you, you literally are probably like a movie star because that is yeah, how are. people tr get transported into another world, right? Ultimately, that's how people get transported. Yeah, and those paintings are incredible. They are so well done. Well, and hey, you guys, we're about to wrap up this episode. But in the next episode, uh, while we're ranting about all kinds of things and somehow coming back to Switzerland, somehow we're, we're going to be talking about some pretty interesting things revolved around uh, CERN and finance in the Switzerland area. And we've got some interesting stuff for you guys. So I highly recommend you stick around. Uh, until next time and watch our part two on the crazy country of Switzerland. John, did you have anything else to add? Uh, what is that little saying that we have? Oh, yeah. Stay, something, something. be vigilant, stay curious. <laughs> there you go. All right. You're going to get it someday. 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 All right. See you guys next time.